Hi folks, this is Pastor Joe McClure with Open Doors Community Church. Glad you are tuning in today. Today I want to talk to you about a subject that concerns life, the meaning of life, and what we're to do in life. So I want you to stay tuned. I want to give a shout out to my church family uh, and those that view on a normal basis. We appreciate you and we thank God for you and we pray for every one of you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give you all praise, glory, and honor. Holy Ghost, take charge of this message. Give the people of God the revelation, the impartation, and the illumination of the Word of God in their understanding that they would never, ever be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you will, I want you to watch something, and then I'll be back. God bless. For those of you that are following along, open your Bibles up to Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to look at verse 1 and then verse 2. <clears throat> the Bible tells us in verse 1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race that has been marked out for us. I want you to understand it is talking about the race of life. It's a critical thing. It's the most important thing because not only is it a race of life, but it also is determined by how you perform, how well you run this race, and then more importantly, how you end up with this race. Now, I want you to know this race is a lifelong test, and it's a test of faith in this world. And it's something that we will be doing on a daily basis. You know, in other areas of the scripture, it talks about being in Christ. We're a new creation. And it talks about the old has gone and the new has come. And what it really is saying is the old is leaving and the new is coming. Because your life, it's like fruit, folks. And fruit takes time to grow. And a changed life takes time to adjust because we're throwing off everything in the world that hinders 
and we're taking on spiritual matters with God. And sometimes it's just downright hard. Now the good thing is, is that God loves you and his grace and mercy is to help you through. But he has marked out for you this race of life. So just like what you viewed earlier, you can't run this race sitting down and you can't run this race and complete this race in the wrong direction. You've got to be following the ways of the Lord. The race must be run with perseverance, with patience, and with endurance. So you pace yourself because you're going to be running for a long time. And you want to run in the right direction. You want to make the right choices. And listen, all of us are free to make our choices. But we're not free from the consequence of those choices if we choose bad ones. This race of life is tough at best. Some days are going to go smooth and some days is going to be rough. But you've got to keep running in the right direction. Because if you do, you will not lose. And no matter what you go through, this too will come to pass. That God is faithful, who will never leave you nor will he ever forsake you. He is an ever-present help in a time of trouble. And don't ever forget that. That God loves you, has prepared a way for you, but gives you the right to choose as to whether you follow the Lord or the sad thing is whether you reject Him. But today, we want to talk about this race. We don't want to talk about somebody refusing the goodness of God and turning away from it. What a tragedy. So we want to talk about this race. And it goes on to say the way of victory is the same as with others. Do you know that we're not talking about like the Boston Marathon where they've got to pace themselves because they've got 26 miles to run. But do you know those that run short sprints, and I mean they give it everything they've got, do you know so that they have the least resistance that not only the tight-fitting suit that they wear, but do you know they also shave the hair off of their body? Because they're that serious about running this thing and ending well. And in this life, you and I have got to do the same thing. We're going to start out running. We want to give God everything we've got, but we want to finish well. Do you know how bad it is to run this race, to invest your life in this race and then quit before it's over with or turn in the wrong direction? And believe me, this world has devices out there to pull you away from God. This race must be run by throwing off the sin that so easily entangles. These are besetting sins. These are sins that would just pull your focus away from God. Hinder you with the good that you want to do. Do you know the Bible says that the man who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't sins against God? Of course, anytime we sin, it's against our Holy Father. The psalmist David cried out, and you and you alone, O God, have I sinned against. That's why we need to repent of our sins, and it's him that we've got to get to forgive us. How do we run this race with perseverance? How do we strip off everything that would hinder us so that we have the least resistance to the finish line? It's verse 2. 
And it says here, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. So what does that mean? That means that Jesus Christ is our all in all. He is everything to you and I. And as Christians, He is everything. Nothing else matters but that I please my Lord. Now, I've got a family. My quiver is full. I've got a family. I've got a lot of kids. I've got grandkids. I've got great-grandkids. God has blessed me. And I love my family, my kids and my grandkids, my great-grandkids. God has blessed me with them, and they are a treasure. I don't deserve everything that God has blessed me with and has given me. He is a good God. Folks, I'm here to tell you, there is nothing better. But how do we win this race called life? Is by fixing our eyes to readjust, to make permanent on Jesus Christ and Him alone. Do you know, Peter, the only other one that walked on water besides Jesus Christ stepped out of the boat? And Jesus told him, said, come, Peter. And Peter walked on the water? I mean, walked on water. But then all of a sudden, the enemy reminded him that he was there. And the waves picked up and began to get hard. And the winds began to blow ferociously. And Peter took his eyes off the Lord and sunk and almost drowned. And the Lord had to pick him up on top of the water and lead him back to the boat. And asked him, why of so little faith? You know, I know... I've experienced it, and I know you have. I know there's people in your life that has let you down. But I know God never has, and maybe you've never given God a chance. But you need to. And I know there are some people out there that things have happened, and then they've blamed God for it. They didn't love God to begin with. They didn't serve God. They didn't do anything for God. But then they want to blame God for the bad that happens. You give your life to Him. You let Him know that He means something to you. Especially before you ever try to put the responsibility on Him for something that has happened. Listen, nowhere in this race does it say that everything is going to be perfect and that everything is going to be all right. You know what? Some things happen in life. Passing away happens. Tragedies happen. But it's only because of the sin that was in the garden. And we can't turn around and blame Adam and Eve because they chose their choices and they were bad ones. But you and I have done the same thing ever since. We've contributed to the sin problem in this world. And that's why there's bad things that happen to good people. It's because of sin. It ain't God's fault. You may say, yeah, but God could have stopped it. Yeah, God could have stopped you too. But he wanted you to love him and he gave you the right to make your own choice. And if you chose bad... You've added to the sin problem. It's your fault too. Just like if I have, it's mine too. I don't blame God for anything. You know, the Bible says, what can the clay say to the potter? And when something happens in my life that's hard to get over, I hold on to God that much tighter. And I know He is the only way For me to get to heaven. So I'm not going to blame him for anything. I will not surrender my life to this world. And burn in the devil's hell. When it's all over. Uh Uh-uh. Not this boy. I know in whom I believe. And I know where I'm going when I take my last breath on this side. I'll be with him forevermore. And your chance is the same way. So be determined 
fix your eyes on Jesus because there's a lot of temptation in this world and the enemy's going to use it to try to bring you down. Don't let him. Don't let him. But when you fix your eyes on him, then you've got to be determined to follow Christ no matter what. If the world tries to entice you, or even some of your friends, or maybe even some of your family, you've got to be strong and stand up for Jesus. We owe him that much. After all, he went to the cross for your sin and my sin and paid a debt that we could have never paid. I'm telling you, he's a good God, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's bring this thing to a close. Who for the joy set before him and endured the cross, scorning its shame and has now sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He willingly, they didn't force him. He could have stopped it at any time. He willingly went to the cross to provide you and I a way to heaven. And that's why Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one coming to my Father unless he come through me. John 14, 6. And Hebrews 9, 27 says it's appointed once for man to die and then face the judgment. Why the judgment? Because there is life after death. And the Bible says concerning the Lord, he came to seek and save that which is lost, that none would perish. So there that choice is again. Are you going to run the race? Are you going to choose to follow the right direction? And if you don't know him, are you willing to give him your life and your heart right now and put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ and go to heaven when you die? There are some of you out there right now that want to, and I want to lead you in a prayer. Right now, we're going to settle this this evening. You follow along with me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I have listened to this word, and I know there's something bigger than me, and I know there's something out there bigger than anything that made all this happen. And I don't understand everything, but what little I do understand, I want my life changed. Lord, I'm sorry for the way that I've done. And I'm opening up my heart and my life right now, and I'm asking you to forgive me. I'm asking you to come in, Lord, and give me a new heart and change my life. And I will follow the ways of the Lord. I will get into that book, the good book. Lord, I will read it. And I'll try to understand it the best I can and what little I do know of it and what I learn from it. I will follow you the days of my life until you bring me home. Thank you, Lord, for saving me in Jesus' name. My friends, I'm telling you now that is the greatest decision that you have ever made in your life and ever will make. And I'm telling you now, you get in a good Bible-believing church that will preach nothing but the truth, so help them God. And if you can't find one, you tune in to Open Doors and listen to old Pastor Joe. I promise to be faithful and I promise to preach the Word of God to you and to help you grow in this thing called Christianity. Now, I want you to know that I love you and God bless you. And let me pray for you. Lord God, thank you for the salvations. Thank you for those that have tuned in and those that will. Lord, we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. And we thank you, Jesus, for giving us a way to heaven, the place that where there's no more tears, no more suffering, no more pain, and no more death. We love you, Lord, and we bless the name of Jesus. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and hallelujah. God bless you till the next time.